Welcome to my keyboard studio. I'm Richard Bradley, and together we're going to start learning a little bit about jazz, even some jazz improvisation. If you started keyboard with my first three videos of how to play piano, you're actually at a perfect place to continue with learning how to play jazz. You may also have the how to play blues, and actually it's a good idea to work the two tapes together. You don't have to finish the jazz, then go on to the blues. They really work right well together. One other suggestion is that you do get a manuscript book, a book with some music paper in it. So why don't we get our booklet, put it up on your keyboard, and let's get started. Excited about getting started? Well, I sure am. Got your book on the piano, your keyboard? Let's open it up to page two. We're going to start with a C major scale. And without being too technical, that's simply C to C, an octave apart. Our fingers are going to be one, two, three, thumb under, one, two, three, four, five. Let's try that together. C, one, two, three, thumb under, one, two, three, four, five. Let's come down now. Five, four, three, two, one. Now third finger over, three, two, one. Good. Let me call out the letter names this time. Ready? C, D, E, thumb under, F, G, a, B, C. Come down. C, B, A, G, F. Third finger over. E, D, C. Good. Page three. A chord is three or more notes played simultaneously, and a triad is a three note chord. And an easy way to find a chord is play the name of the chord, it's like C, skip a key, play the next, skip a key, and play the next. So on C, we're going to play C, skip D, play E, skip F, and play G. Great. Now, the degrees of a chord are named root for the name of the chord. Then your third finger was on E, it's called the third of the chord. Fifth finger was on G, and that's called the fifth of the chord, isn't it? Okay? Let's start on F. F is the root, the third is A, fifth finger is on C, the fifth of the chord, an F chord. Feel comfortable? Good. Let's turn the page. Now you can see on page four, in the middle of the page, we've built a chord on every degree of the scale. Why don't we play that using fingers one, three, and five. So a C chord, coming up on the D, come up one more, starting on the E, start on the F, the G, the A, the B, and up to C. They had different qualities, didn't they? Very interesting. The one chord, the C, the four, the F, and the five, the G, are major chords. Let's play that. C, F, and G. Happy sounds, yeah, major chords. The two chord, D, the E, the three chord, and the six, the A chord, are minor, and they have kind of a sad quality. Let's listen to the D minor chord. E minor. Now A minor. Hear the difference between the A minor and G, that major sound. Isn't that a big difference? Yeah. So the one chord, four chord, and five are major. Two, three, and six are minor. And the seventh chord is diminished, and we'll have to get to that a little bit later. Bottom of page four, we're talking about a slash chord. When we see a slash chord, it looks like two chord names, like C slash F, or D minor slash C. The chord is the name on the left of the slash. So if I had a D minor chord, slash C, that means a D minor chord, but I'm going to play a C in the bass. Boy, that's interesting, isn't it? How about an E minor slash C? Yeah. Look at page five. And all we're doing in the right hand is playing the same chords up the C major scale, C, D minor, E minor, etc. And in the left hand, I'm keeping a C bass. So we have some slash chords, don't we? Let's give it a try. I think you can keep up with me. About this tempo. One, two, three, play. C. might want to rewind your tape and do that again. Let me pause for just a second. Come right back, okay? Feel pretty good? Yeah, it's a nice sound, isn't it? Real contemporary sound, sure. Now, on page six, we're just going to vary the rhythm a little bit, and this time we're going to start with varying the rhythm in the left hand. And jazz has an awful lot to do with varying rhythms, varying chords, changing things around. 
makes it a little exciting. So in the left hand, this time, instead of playing just C, C, I'm going to play C, C, C. One, two, three, four. Let's give it a try. Same right hand. I don't think you have any problem with that. One, two, let's play. fun. It's great in rock bands too, isn't it? Page seven. Let's take the same chords, but this time let's change the rhythm in, in the right hand. You can use thousands of different rhythms and make up some. I want you to make up a lot of them. I have picked one here. This goes one. You might want to tap that. One, da, 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 Let's give it a go. Ready? One, two, ready, play. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Learned a lot here. Let's stop now. And I want you to practice for a little bit. When you feel comfortable with what we've learned, come on back, okay? Okay, did you try my rhythm? Good. Did you make up some of your own? What? Come on. You need to do a lot more on your own. A lot of variations. Try more and more and more. Okay. After this lesson, though, remember to go back and do some more of that. Let's turn to page eight. Now, the same chords that we were just playing in the right hand can also create melodies. First of all, we're just going to break up our chord. We're going to play the root, third, fifth. Root, third, fifth. Right up the scale. Why don't I play first, then we can add it together. Try it again. Why don't you play with me now? Ready? One, two, let's play. Good. Now, I don't think it's written anywhere that we have to start on the root. Why don't we reverse this? This time we're going to play fifth, third root, five, third root. So if you look at page nine, that's exactly what we're going to do. Listen first. One, two, I'll play. Try it together. Ready? Play. idea. Let's play page 8 and then go right to page 9. Okay? Start on page 8. One, two, let's play. Page 9. Do we have some rhythm differences? Yeah, I played around a little bit, and I'd actually like you to do that too. Is there anything wrong with <laughs> Nothing. What did you like? Okay, why don't we pause again and experiment, going up, going down, breaking the chords both ways, and see what you like. Combine one. Maybe first measure up, second measure down. Why, that's starting to sound like something, isn't it? Okay, pause. Try a few more, and then come right back. Okay, in the introduction, remember I suggest that you get a manuscript book. Just a book with you know, music paper. And I think it's a good idea to write some of these variations that you've liked down. Also, a tape recorder is kind of a nice way to keep track of some of the sounds you've liked. Okay, let's change pages now. Turn to page 10. We can also use this broken chord as a bass line. 
just what a bass player might play. You know. Hear that bass player? Okay. I'm going to put the chord in the right hand, bass in the left hand. If you have trouble, leave out the right hand, but get that bass going, okay? Let's try it. One, two, ready, play. We could even experiment putting the chord on different beats. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Yeah, we're getting real creative now. Get those creative juices going. Now, on page 11, here's another variation, and it uses a dotted quarter eighth, and the rhythm sounds one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. And if you look at your booklet at the top of the page, you'll say, see that I could write this with a tie or a dot. It's still gonna sound the same way. One, two, and three, four. One, tie, and three, I know you've heard this rhythm. Just some chords. Let's try breaking up our chord in the left hand now on page 11. And I'm going to play root, 5, 3, 5, just stay with the C chord for just a bit. Stay with me. Ready? One, two, ready, play. Root, five, three, five, root. Five, three, five, root. Good, good. Try it on D minor. E minor. I think you have it. Let's put it together now. Chord in the right hand. One, Two, let's play. Good. Well, we've learned a lot this past lesson, this few minutes, haven't we? got chords moving, variations in the right hand, variations in the left hand, different rhythms. I think you really now need to practice, maybe review this whole section of the tape, and let it digest for a day or two, okay? When you feel ready, come back to the tape. See you soon. Well, we've got accomplished a lot, haven't we? You practiced a bit this week? Good, good. Doing well? Good. Usually I hear from students say, gee, I didn't know it was so easy to make up music like that. I think we've come a long way since the early days of all these exercises to play well. We really want to enjoy music. That's what it's all about. But we do want to learn some of the technical things as well. So let's turn to page 12 in your booklet. The first few pages, everything we did was in the key of C, based around the C major scale, wasn't it? From C to C, and we built the chords on that. Now we're going to change keys completely. We're going to play in the key of F. So we're going to play an F scale from F to F, Something strange about the F scale. It doesn't have a B in it. It has a B flat. Remember B flat, the third black key? So let's see if we can try that. It has a little different fingering. Just use one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's a little easier scale to play in some ways. Let's play it. Ready? F, G, A, fourth finger on B flat, thumb under to C. Come on down. F, E, D, C. Fourth finger, B flat, A, G, F. Good. Now, when we build chords based on the scale, we have to remember that B flat. So we start out the F chord, white keys, but G minor, G, B flat, D. Do you see that black key right in the middle? G, B flat, D. Great. A minor. Now a B flat chord. We're starting on the B flat. B flat, D, F. Good. C chord. Easy. D minor. E diminished, it also has a black E, the, the B flat, right at the end, and up to an F. 
Okay. Why don't we re review these chords one more time? F, G minor, black key in the middle, A minor, B flat, black key at the end, C chord, you know that one, D minor, you know that one, E diminished, black key in the top, and then an F chord. Okay? Now, on page 13, we're going to use these chords, but this time we'll put an F in the bass. So an F chord, F bass. G minor chord, F bass. A minor, F bass. B flat chord, got to find that one. C, F bass, good. D minor, F bass. E diminished, F bass, and F. Good, good, great. I'm going to pause for just a second and then come right back. Okay. Okay, feel comfortable with that key? Feels a little different, doesn't it? Getting your hands up into that, into the black keys. And I'll give you a hint. When you're playing white keys, you do play down here. But when you get into the black keys, you have to move your hand up into the black, you know, back here a little bit more. Especially for that B flat. Look where my hand is. Way up in here, isn't it? If you wait, oh, that's too uncomfortable. You have to get way up in here. Okay, let's go on. Page 14. Now, we've broken our chords up. Going up a scale and coming down, we've done root third fifth and we've done fifth third root. This time, same bass. Go back to the key of C for a second. But we're just going to play four notes. So if we're starting on C, C, D, E, F, C, D, E, F. Good. Now on D, D, E, F, G, E minor. Just four notes, whatever our chord tone was. Look at page 14. It's written out there for you in your booklet. Let me play it first. Ready? Okay, and the trick is always starting each one on your thumb. That's easy. Let's try it together now. So your thumb is going to start on C, thumb is going to start on B. I think we can do it. One, two, let's start. Page 15. Starts, you know, what we've been playing so far really kind of sound exercise-y, doesn't it? But take some of this to really put it all together. Now, we've broken the chord up, but look at 15. I'm going to start the first measure with four notes in a row. Then I'm going to go to the fifth note, but use the broken chord. So. Let's try it just in the C measure, just that first measure. Four notes, C, D, E, F. Now, the, here's the C chord, but from top down. Five, three, root. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four. C chord, five, three, root. Okay? Same thing on D minor now. D, E, F, G, D minor, five, three, root. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four, five, three, Okay, now we could add left hand bass to it. Let's try that. Could swing it a little bit. Change the rhythms a little bit. Have fun with that. Again, I think this is a good time to stop for a little bit, practice this in your little manuscript book or whatever you've, manuscript board, um, book you've used or manuscript paper. Write some down, write several down, tape record some of the ones you like, and then come back and see me when you feel comfortable. Okay? Are you having fun creating your own music? I hope so. I certainly enjoy playing jazz. I think that's because I do get the chance, get the chance to, you know, to make up my own thing and be creative all the time. I do enjoy playing classical music, but it's a whole different feeling with jazz, isn't there? So far, what we've played have been broken up chords, up and down, little scale passages, very important. Now we're going to learn a chord progression. And in my method, I call them patterns of chords, pat chords for short. And there's basically 12 chord progressions. And the first one we're going to learn, you actually already know. 
Remember the C chord? D minor chord? E minor chord? That's right, just the first three chords of the C scale. So we're going to play C, D minor, E minor, and come back to D minor, and then we're going to start all over again. Let's try that in the left hand. Ready? C chord, D minor, E minor, and back to D minor. Then we'll start all over. Now this progression can be used for thousands and thousands of songs. Whenever there's nothing going on, you want to fill in something, or you want to make it sound a little more updated, maybe, instead of playing a, you know, you know, just boring chords. Let's take pattern number one, C, D minor, and E minor, and put it in there in its place. Ready? Sure makes it sound a heck of a lot better, doesn't it? In our book on page 16, I've taken the melody of shortened bread. And we're going to add pattern one to that. Let's try that first of all. A little introduction. sound a lot better, doesn't it? Now, since last time we visited, you probably noticed I've changed keyboards, and I'm at an electronic keyboard today. And I know a lot of you out there have these wonderful electronic devices, and they're just so wonderful. Of course, you don't have to have them tuned. That's really a nice part about it, isn't it? But they have rhythms. This one even has a recording uh, studio in it. Basically, I can record tracks over tracks and different sounds, different instruments. Why don't we play shortened bread again, and we're going to put on some drums, okay? See if you can keep, keep with me, huh? Let's give it a little try. Two, a one, two, let's play. Here we go. Isn't that fun? Boy, have a whole orchestra with you. I like that. Now, at the bottom of page 17, you've noticed I have a few notes that look a little different than what we've had before. We have a dotted eighth sixteenth, and that's bump. A little syncopation feeling. So instead of playing one and two and we could Wouldn't that be fun? I know you need to try this. I'm sure you're anxious to get at your keyboard, and if you have some automatic rhythms, please put them on. Not too fast. You can always you know, speed it up as you get a little more proficient with it. So why don't you pause for a little bit, and then come on back. How'd you do with shortening bread? Good. Isn't that fun? Oh, good. Let's turn to page 18 in our booklet. Now, we've learned pattern one, C, D minor, and E minor, back to D minor. But there's something in jazz we call modal improvisation. And a mode is nothing but a C scale played from C to C, or a D to D. And if we were going to Juilliard, we would learn all of our modes. And from C to C is an Ionian mode. D to D is a Dorian mode. E to E is a Phrygian. F to F is a Lydian. G to G is a Mixolydian. A to A is an Aeolian, and B to B is a Locrian. Now, the names may help you, I don't know, but not at this point. We're going to just get used to playing a C scale, and we know that we can start at that scale at any point. If I'm playing a chord, I start on an E. Hey, that works, doesn't it? Could I start on an F? Do I have to go all the way? No. Right. We know pattern one fairly well. 
So right now, if we just think of path chord number one, C, D minor, and E minor, we're going to use the C of the C chord as our C scale. And we can start any place on that scale we want and on any beat. But now we're going to use the D minor and the E minor as our harmony. So in our left hand, we're only going to play D minor and E minor. In our right hand, we're just going to make up things, make up a melody. Try it. Listen to me first. Very new age, isn't it? You should listen to some new age recordings, sure. Uh, a lot of different people doing this different different types of sounds. Kind of a mellow, mellow background. I've written a little piece here called Prima Mode. And all I've done is use D minor and E minor chords. And the melody, only white keys. So the C scale. Let's try a little bit of Prima Mode. You could just sit here for hours doing the same thing. Yeah, you might get bored with the same two chords. Hmm. You think you could do that in the key of F? Right, what would pattern one be in the key of F? An F chord, a G minor, and an A minor. So we'll use the F scale in our right hand, and the G minor and the A minor chords, just a little bit. We need to experiment different keys, different chords, different melodic patterns. If you have trouble making a pattern, just pick up four notes. Like, let's take, let's say C, D, E, E. How about D, E, F, F? Keep that pattern. Let's just let your hand drop on a different note. How about on G? How about E? How about on B? Listen to it. I know you're going to have a ball playing modal jazz improvisation. I, I always do. You need some time, though, don't you? Sure. You need to sit at your keyboard. Try it with some rhythms, if you like. Try different sounds. Try different keys. But experiment. That's the main thing. Create on your own. Okay. See you soon. Practice. Have you had fun playing modal improvisation? Yeah, it's so much fun just experimenting. And imagine, all that music with just two chords, D minor and E minor in the key of C, or what were in the key of F? That's right, G minor and A minor. Might try some other keys that you're familiar with. We're going to go on now and learn a couple more chord progressions, pat chords in my terminology. And we're going to learn the circle of chords. You can see this on page 20 in your book. Chords can progress in three ways, basically. Pattern one, they move scale-wise, didn't they? C, D minor, and E minor. They can also move by half steps down chromatically. And the other way the chords move are around the circle of chords. Now, if I were to play a C seventh chord in my left hand, it's a four note chord, it sounds kind of muddy, doesn't it? Chords with four notes sound just too heavy down there. So we use a term called shell voicing. It's like the shell of an egg, it's the outsides of an egg. So if we have a C seventh chord, we're just going to play the C and the B flat. Now, to find the seventh, we're going to play the root and then the octave. 
Now down a whole half step and then another one. Makes it a whole step. Let me repeat that again. The octave, half step, another half step. Two half steps equal a whole step. So for a C7, we're going to have C and B flat. Can you find those two notes? Okay. Put your hand on the C7. And our little exercise on 21, these seventh chords, shell voice seventh chords, are just going to move down chromatically by half step. So C7, everything down a half step, B7, so you have B and A, everything down a half step, B flat and A flat, A and G, down a half step, down another half step, down a half step, half step. Back to C7 again, aren't we? Right. We're going to go on. You can always stop your tape and come back and try that some more. That's the advantage of taking a lesson on a video, isn't it? Now, a C7 chord, if you listen to it, can I walk home and say, bye, nice seeing you? <laughs> Wants to f resolve someplace, doesn't it? So look at the second line on page 21. Here's our C7, and we're going to resolve. It's just going to move down. So C7 is re going to resolve to F and A. Go back to your clock on page 20. Look at the C up at 12 o'clock. Where does it go to at 1 o'clock? F, doesn't it? Now, I want you to watch my left hand real closely here. I'm just going to play the exercise on the uh, second line on page 21. Just kind of watch what my thumb does, OK? you see that? It just moved down by half steps, didn't it? The bottom line, we're going to start on a G7, a G and an F, resolving to C, moving down chromatically with your thumb. Okay? Again, if you need to, stop your tape and go back, but let's go on. We talked about seventh chords. A seventh can be added to either a major or a minor chord. So we know a C chord is C, E, G, right? C, E, G, root, third, and fifth. Here's your octave, half step, whole step. So now we have C7, C, E, G, B flat, a four note chord. On page 22, we're going to play all these seventh chords around the circle of chords. So we're going to start with C7. So here's your C chord, add your B flat. Play them together. Play an F chord. Whole step below the F, E flat. Okay? How about a B flat chord? Whole step below is A flat. You need to take a little time and practice these four note chords in your right hand. So just pause a little bit and then come right back, okay? A little different playing four notes at once, isn't it? Yeah, I know, it's a little different feeling. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bit easier for you as we go on here. We're going to improvise with these chords now. And instead of playing like a G7 all at once, let's play them one note at a time. G, your root, third, fifth, seventh. Okay, now we're going to resolve to a C chord and play just the scale down, E, D, C. So look at page 23, this first measure. We have G, B, D, F, just that G7 chord broken up, and then scale passage on C. Let's do, I'll do the shell voicing in the left hand. Let's see what happens. Nice, isn't it? C7 resolves to F. Again. F7 resolves to B flat. Forget what it resolves to, go back and look at your clock on page 20. Now, really, you need to take that all the way around the clock and try that with major chords, sevenths. Then you can make each one of those major chords minor. How do you make a major chord minor? By lowering the third a half step. So C major, C E G, C minor, C E flat G. Let's make that minor a seven. So C, E flat, G, and where's your seven? The B flat, right. Ooh, isn't that a pretty chord? 
Okay, let's practice that. Also, I think it's a good idea here to get your music notebook out and your manuscript book and write all of those seventh chords out in major and minor and resolving. Why don't you do that and then come back and see me. Well, we're getting a good start on improvising now, aren't we? Great. Seventh chords, I know, take a little more time to get used to in your hands. You're not used to playing four notes, and that will take a few days, but keep plugging away at it. Now, on page 24, in our left hand, we're going to play the shell. We've been practicing that for a while. But in our right hand, we're going to complete the chord. So we're going to add the third and the fifth. Okay, remember what a C chord is now? Root, third, and fifth, right? So C, E, and G is the third and fifth. So we just get started on E and G here. We're going to be all right. We're just going to move down by half steps. Another half step, another half step. We're just going to keep going, okay? Let's start, and we'll play fairly slow. Slowly on 24, okay? Left hand C7, C and B flat. Right hand E and G. Okay, now everything's going to move down one half step. There you go. Another half step. Another half step. Half step. Half step. Okay. If you need to, you can always stop your tape and come back. Let's pick up on the F sharp seventh chord. Wow. Little finger, left hand, F sharp, thumb on E. There's your F sharp seventh, okay? It's going to just move down like we've been doing. And your right hand's going to complete this chord with an A sharp and a C sharp. Okay? Let's move that now. Down a half step. Down a half step. Down a half step. Down a half step. And down another half step. It's a nice sound, isn't it? Oh, yeah. That's really sounding bluesy and funky, isn't it? Okay, let's put that to work for us, okay? Let's go to page 25, and here's a little piece I've entitled Get Down, and look at the left hand now. C7, shell voice, down a half step, down a half step, down a half step. Then we're going to resolve D and F sharp. G7, resolve to C. Back to G7. Might be a good idea for you to pause a second and just practice that. Yeah, it's not too hard, is it? Down. Let's put a little rhythm on that. We'll play both hands. And maybe you want to listen to me first, then you can practice your own, okay? Okay, I hear everybody out there yelling, what was that last chord? I know. It was a C13 sharp 11. What? Okay, let me show you how easy it is to find these chords. Big chord, huh? C13 with a sharp 11. Wow. Biggest chord we can make, but just about. Wow. Now, let's review chords just a little bit. We know that a chord was a root the third, and the fifth, and then we learned the seventh, didn't we? So let's take a C chord. Root is C, third is E, fifth was G, and the seventh was B flat. So our C seventh chord. And what was our shell? That's right, just the seventh and the root, those two. So we could just play those two if we wanted to. Now, for a thirteenth, chords are all built in thirds. You can see root, third, five, seven, what would be the next? Nine, eleven, and thirteen. That's as big as chords get, 13s, okay? Now we call this one a sharped 11, okay? So we have to sharp that one. Root is C, third is E, fifth is G, seventh is B flat. What would the ninth be then? Right, D. Eleventh, F, but what we say? F sharp, right. And thirteenth, A. Okay. Now, our simple, easy way to find these 13th chords. What chord was this? Right, C7. Now, 
What chord is D, F sharp, and A? Who has it? Okay, a D major chord, right. So wouldn't it be easier to say a D chord over a C chord? Wouldn't that be much easier? And if you wanted to put the root on top again, it would just make it a D seventh. How far is it from C to D? One whole step. So if we wanted an F13, what would we play? An F seventh here, what's a whole step above F? G seventh. Okay, got a lot to think about and work with there, don't you? Have fun playing 13th chords. See you in a bit. Did you enjoy playing Get Down? I enjoy playing it. You know, I had a little fun with it. I took my notes and trilled them a little bit, you know. Have fun with it. Let's go on. Page 26. We've had pattern number one, C, D minor, E minor. We've had five to one where we did a G7 and resolved to a C. Okay, the next most important progression of all is the two chord, the five chord, and the one. Remember back to your C scale. Your C chord was the one chord. Your D minor was the two, wasn't it? Instead of playing the full D minor in shell voicing, we're just going to play the first two notes. So D and F. Play them in my left hand. G7 shell. Keep your thumb on the F, little finger on G. You're right on it, aren't you? Let's do that again. D minor, G7. Resolve that to a C, just like you've been doing, to C and E. D and F, G and F, C and E. Let's try it in one more key. G minor, G and B flat, C7, C and B flat, to F and A. Okay? I've written out a lot more keys here in the book, and I want you to take some time and do that. And write them out in your notebook. That always helps to write them out in your notebook. But now, on top of this, we're going to put an improvisation line. And we're just going to simply take the notes of our chord. First of all, we had D minor. It could be D minor seventh. So what are the notes? D, F, A, and C. So we're just using a broken chord. D, F, A, and C. Your next chord was G7. And just come down the scale. Start on the B. Going to the C. Scale starting on the E. Look at page 27. The first two measures on the second line. D minor 7, broken. Now, G7 scale, B, A, G, F, C chord scale, E, F, G, A, G. Put it together. Do it one more key. Key of F, the next two measures, G minor 7, C7, F. Okay, let's break our G minor 7th chord up. G, B flat, D, F. Now, C7, start on the E, the third of your chord. Come on down. few more keys there. You need to try them, write some more out, experiment. And then I'm going to show you, when you come back, how to apply this to some music. So practice this a bit and then come right back, okay? Okay. I think it's a good idea to warm up just about every day with using those shell voicings and making up new right-hand improvisations. Even after playing for as many years as I've been playing, I still like to warm up doing that. And my students do it as well. Look at page 28, page 29. There's a little tune called Careless Love. And in the fourth measure, it really just sits there for a while. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Boring, isn't it? Boring. So let's put in a G minor and a C seventh chord, because we're in the key of F, right? What's the two chord in the key of F? G minor. So instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, we've got to play. G minor. So just a little exercise that we just had on the previous pages comes in real handy at this point, doesn't it? Let me play the whole thing through for you. I'm going to use a little bit of rhythm, and then you can take your time and practice it a little bit, okay? training. 
What was the last chord I played? You're right, an F13 with a sharp 11. F7 in this hand. I used a shell voice and a G in this hand. Wow. Got an idea for you. In your notebook, why don't you copy the left hand of this piece down? Just the left hand part. And see what you can make up with your right hand, all right? Practice this, have fun, write it out, and come back and see me soon. Let's go on with another pattern now that you're doing so well. I think we ought to start with another key as well. Uh, we've played in C, we've played in F. Let's start with G. The G scale is just like C, except it doesn't have an F. It has an F sharp. So let's practice that scale quickly. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Come on down. Five, four, three, two, one, three, two, one. So same fingering we used on the C scale. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, and down. Again, we could build chords in the key of G. So let's try that. G chord, A minor chord, B minor has an F in it, so it's an F sharp, B, D, F sharp, C, D chord, D major, D, F sharp, A, E, and F sharp diminished, F sharp, A, C, and G. So those are our chords in the key of G. We're going to make a little different chord progression this time. And we're going to use the one chord, going to the sixth chord, the two, and the five. So in the key of G, the one chord would be G, the six would be E, the two would be A, and the five is D. Let's just try these bass notes. G, E, A, D. Even lower, we're a bass player. Okay, can we add the chords in our right hand? Sure. G chord, E minor, A minor, D. G, E minor, A minor, D. Look at page 31, the last line. Same bass line, just breaking the chords up. Sound familiar? I'm sure somewhere along the line as a child you've heard somebody play heart and soul, that same pattern. Should we turn the page? We've got the bass pattern. Let me give you a little hint. Just playing those roots in our bass, the G, E, A, and D. Use fingers two, four, one, and five. Second finger on G, fourth finger on E, thumb on A. Because if I wanted to tr play this in another key, transpose it, just put my second finger on the C. Two, four, one, five. So we can play it in other keys. We're going to start with some more improvisation now. We have a bass line, just these bass notes from our pattern. Now, we have the G, E, A, D. We're going to make them half notes. So it'll be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And with your right hand, we're going to use just whole notes. So I'm going to take a note out of the G chord, or at least out of the G scale, and we're going to try a few different things. Let me try it for you. And you could repeat. All right. I think it's fun to do it with an automatic rhythm on, of course, or if you have a regular piano, a metronome might help just keep your beat steady. Okay, now we've played whole notes in the right hand, half notes in the left hand. We're going to continue with the half notes in the left hand on page 33. This time we're going to make them half notes in the right hand as well. So we're just going to pick different notes from the scale. Why don't you pause a little bit and try that one, and come right back. Yeah, 
few sounds you didn't like as well, well, experiment. That's the idea with jazz. Experiment a little bit. You play a little bit more, try some more. You'll find things you like, things you want to throw away. If you want to keep the better ones, put them on a tape recorder, put them in your manuscript book. Okay, let's go to the bottom of page 33. Same left hand, but we're going to, this time, make our right hand quarter notes. So, two for each left hand. Actually, be a nice little jazz improvisation on Heart and Soul or Blue Moon or something that uses the same chord progressions. I think it's a good time to stop now. There's an awful lot of information in these last two pages that you should really do many, many uh, times and experiment with. Keep your favorite ones. Try them in another key. Can you play that same thing in the key of C? How about the key of F? So you've got a couple of days' work here, actually. So why don't you turn off your tape? If you want to review the lesson, go ahead and do it and then come back. I think we have a lot of fun playing the entertainer, don't you? <laughs> entertainer has another pattern that I would like to share with you. And actually, it's kind of ragtime music, isn't it? And I think if we go back in the history of jazz, ragtime would certainly be part of it. We've done a little different here, the little pattern. Notice I wasn't using any chords. What happens here is we call this pattern number four. Anytime chords are a fourth apart, C to F, G to C, F to B flat. And actually, if you look back at your circle of chords that we had before, you'll notice that the chords are all a fourth away, so C to F. And whenever that happens, you know, hey, instead of playing those chords, I can play what we call the chromatic scale. Chromatic comes from a Greek word meaning color, just like uh, chroma film and things means color, doesn't it? And by adding color to our music, it makes it a lot more interesting, obviously. So if I look at uh, page 34 and 35, you'll see your first chords were C, going to an F. So instead of playing mm, it's all right, but I think we can do better. Let's play the chromatic scale. We're going to start with your thumb on C. Down a half step, half step, half step. Just down. Let's put it together. Starts again. Turn the page. Again. Well, your friends will certainly enjoy that, and I hope you do too. It's kind of fun to play that kind of music, isn't it? Let's take some time and practice that now. Why don't you stop your tape and go back and try the entertainer. See you soon. Now in the entertainer we used pattern number four, didn't we? When chords were a fourth apart, we used that chromatic scale going down. It actually works with minor chords as well, or minor chords going to seventh chords. Really great sound there. What if I have an A minor chord going to a D7? A, B, C, D. It's a fourth, isn't it? Play an A minor chord. A, C, E. Now we're only going to change the bottom note. Go down a half step. Go down another half step. And go down one more half step to that F sharp. Let's try that one more time. A, C, E, A minor. Little finger down, half step. Little finger down to G. Little finger down to the F sharp. Hang on to that now. We're actually playing a D9 chord. Wow, ninth chords. Easy way to find them, isn't it? Let's take G minor. We're going to go to a C9. So G minor, G, B flat, and D. Move your bottom finger down. Move down. One more time. C9. We're going to find hundreds and hundreds of songs that we can apply that to. I also find that playing Latin music, that's a great place to use this pattern. Put it in our right hand. G minor. Move your thumb down this time. Move your thumb down and move your thumb down. And we would get something like this. And 
in Latin music, they call that a montuno. Just a little fill-in, something to put in the middle of a piece. You're playing a piece of... Just a little break, you know, a little vamp till ready. Let's turn the page. Page 38. I enjoy this pattern so much on ballads, you know, slow love songs, you know. I think you'll enjoy that. If we look at a special day, page 38, I'm starting with A minor, moving the little finger down, 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 and down. Now, under the first ending, we have the shell voice B7 resolving. Second ending, we have a D7 shell voice resolving. Okay. Now, look at page th 39, third measure. Does that ring a bell? Have we done anything like that before? Remember pattern one, first lesson? C, D minor, G e minor. All we've done now is add a fourth note. So C, E, G, B. And we call this a C major seven because it's not that regular seven. It's only a half step below the root. Listen to that chord. C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven. Let me play a special day for you, and then you have your chance to play along. you could hear a lot of other songs that would use that same chord progression, can't you? I've suggested some in here. Uh, if, Feeling, Stairway to Heaven, My Funny Valentine. It would all be great with that same progression. Now, I put a little ending on there, didn't I? All as it was was pattern one with four notes. So that's a little special treat, isn't it? Okay. Practice this. You might want to do your left hand separately for a while, so you get the movement of the minor and then the four note chords. So practice this and then come back. We'll have some more fun. Let's combine some of these patterns on another song. Now, we had the four note pattern one, so C major seven, C, E, G, B, D minor seven, E minor seven back. And then we had pattern four. We used the chromatic scale. Didn't we? Try a little bit of when the saints go marching in. Why don't I play it first and then you can join me? I'm going to play the right hand an octave higher. There's that 13th chord again, isn't it? Boy, that's a great ending chord. Even arpeggiate that right hand. That'll be a lot of fun. I don't think we have any problems with that first part, as long as you're getting four note chords down. Second line, third measure. We had a D minor going to G. What did we do? That's right, pattern four of the minor. Page 41, top line. Chromatic scale. And I just took another note as an afterbeat. Try that, but I would try just the chromatic scale at first until you feel comfortable with that. All right, why don't you practice that and then come back, okay?
pick up a few more ideas now on improvisation. We know three note chords and we know four note chords. We've had the triad, we've had the seventh, and the major seventh. Major chords have what we call extensions. If I play a C chord, C, E, G, I can extend that by playing the C major seven, just adding another third up, C, E, G, B. Or I can extend that by playing another third up, except I, my hand, of course, won't reach that. So I'll leave off the C and bring it up one. It actually looks like an E minor seventh, doesn't it? But if I play a C bass, boy, that's a great sounding chord, isn't it? So major chords can go up to 11th, actually it can go up to major 13th, but really practically major 7th and major 9th are about as practical as we're going to get. So we want to practice on the page, top of page 42, major 7th and major 9th. Now in the second line on 42, minor chords, we know D minor, great, make it a 7th, make it a minor 9th. Now we have to move the whole hand up because we can't really grab more than four notes. Looks like an F major 7. Bring it up one more to an 11. Wow. So we have a D minor, D minor 7. Move the whole hand up. D minor 9th, looks like an F major 7. Bring it up, whole thing up again. That is a D minor 11th. Wow, a lot of numbers here. But it really looks like an A minor 7. I think if you look in your book, it'll be real clear for you. It's a pretty clear diagram here. We've done the D minor, A minor, E minor, and C minor. Some real pretty chords, and those are really going to help in your melodic improvisations. If you want to pause a little bit, go ahead and do that, but come right back. Now, some of these sounded like uh, exercises again, didn't they? Well, let's get rid of that sound right away. We know if we can take this D minor 7th and break it up, can't we? We've done that for a few lessons now. Let's take a half step below the D, which is C sharp. And by just dropping a half step into that chord, listen to the difference. Wow. How about E minor? We know E, G, B, D, half step. A minor. A flat. Boy, doesn't that sound great? Sure, you might have a piece that's doing something like that, and we could certainly put... be fun, wouldn't it? So we're just taking that half a step below any chord and sliding into it. If you want to pause, go ahead. Now, if we have a D minor 7th, D, F, A, C, we just learned that we could do a half a step into that chord. If we could do it on the first note, I bet we could do it on every note. So C sharp, D, Sometimes we'll find a piece of music that'll have some that. We don't want to sit there all that time, so we'll make up a little scale just using the notes of the chord, but a half a step below each one and then coming into it. Listen to the difference. Wow. Would that be a great fill in for you? Good. Why don't you stop now for a second and practice this on several chords? Take your notebook out and take all the minor seventh chords, all the major chords, and practice. Just practice going into each one like that, okay? Come back. Let's turn on to page 44 now. Here's Billy Boy. And I've reharmonized it instead of just playing. Boring, isn't it? So we've taken all the chords that we've learned about so far. We've done a 2 5 progression, the D minor, pattern 1 with four notes. sound a lot different, doesn't it, just by adding these other chords to it. Well, I think we've gained an awful lot of knowledge and I hope a lot of experience. And I hope you've taken the opportunity to use your video well. 
stop it, start it, and come back and repeat these lessons over and over again. Even students that I've had for years still can go back and pick up you know, important parts of information they've forgotten about and want to review again. It's actually even better than taking lessons with me personally, I guess. You can stop and start, and if you want to practice at midnight, I'll be there. The last two pages, all I've done is made a melodic improvisation with this. Now, what did we do about melodic improvisation? We learned from the very first lessons that we could break a chord up. We could do scale passages. All sorts of things like that. That's all I'm going to do. So I hope you'll give this a chance, practice a lot, and go on to the blues video. And a lot of the blues patterns will work real well in this, so I hope you combine the two of them and have a lot of fun. See you soon.